Hello and welcome to another episode of Casual Learning. I'm your host, John Bannon. What's the deal with Hitchens Razor? Uh, I bet you never heard of Hitchens Razor. I just found out about it yesterday. So uh, I'm going to explain it to you and then explain what's wrong with it. Hitchens Razor is named after a famous, now deceased, new atheist uh, philosopher, Christopher Hitchens. Now, this is sort of a play on Occam's Razor, which is a, a medieval philosophical tool uh, that everybody, all philosophers are familiar with. Hitchens Razor is a is just a new argument that they the atheists have named like Occam's razor even though the two are really very different now Occam's razor is the idea that in trying to decide the truth of something the solution that requires the fewest number of assumptions is probably the correct one. So it's a razor in the sense that it cuts away at unneeded assumptions. So if there's you know two possible answers, one requires uh, that you assume uh, three things, and another requires that you assume two things, the more likely solution is the one that only requires you to assume two things uh, because it's simpler and it's more likely to be the case than the more complicated one that requires you to assume three things. So Occam's razor essentially is a razor that cuts away uh, that unnecessary additional assumption. Now, Hitchens razor, <laughs> the only thing these two things have in common is uh, <laughs> they, they both use the word razor, but Hitchens razor isn't even a razor. It's, it's really a misnomer. Uh, but some cute atheist thought he was going to, you know, get, get this stuck in people's mind because he's trying to get um, Christopher Hitchens stuck in your mind, which trust me, you don't want Christopher Hitchens stuck in your mind if you can avoid it. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to go over this anyway. Now, Hitchens razor is an argument that says that the person who makes the claim has the burden of proof on that claim. And that if that person fails to present evidence to prove that claim, then the other person, the hearer of the claim, can simply dismiss it uh, without arguing. They don't have to say anything. They don't have to argue with you. They could just say, I'm not listening to you. I'm dismissing it because you have not presented evidence. Uh, again, this is not a razor of any sort. <laughs> it's just an atheistic argument. Um, I think the reason they call it Hitchens razors is because Christopher Hitchens, that was his main argument against theism. It was always, you haven't shown me evidence. Show me the evidence that God exists. And of course, he would never agree that there was any evidence for God's existence. So, and, and he would just say, you're wrong, you're wrong. Theists, you're wrong. Atheists are right. You haven't shown me evidence. I don't have to argue with you. you until you show me evidence, I don't have to believe in God. It's your claim. It's your burden of proof. Um, there is no God because you can't give me evidence for him. So that's Hitchens' central atheistic argument, the evidence, give me evidence argument. And so they named it after his, Hitchens. They call it Hitchens' razor, even though it's not a razor. <laughs> so it's kind of a dumb uh, name. It's a misnomer. But I thought I would uh, address it with you so at least you knew about it and, and how to counter it. 
Well, but the, you know, the, the idea that the person making the claim has the burden of proof is, um, you know, it makes some sense. Uh, if you're going to tell somebody something is true, you're going to, the person may ask themselves, well, why should I believe that that's true? And that person uh, will want some sort of evidence that what you're saying is true. That makes perfect sense. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, the, the, the devil is in the details. And the, the details that Hitchens' razor doesn't give you is what is evidence? How do you define evidence? And another thing Hitchens Razor doesn't address is, okay, so there's evidence, but what is the level of certainty that you need to form the belief that something is true based on evidence? What's the burden of proof, essentially? Uh, doesn't Hitchens Razor doesn't address that at all. And those are important questions. You got to ask those questions. Now, the atheists using Hitchens' razor, they have their own answers to those questions, but they don't tell you what those answers are. Uh, and then you find out that they're not very good answers to these questions. So they're really, uh, they're tricking you using this into a much, much higher burden uh, than you otherwise should have to show or accomplish in uh, proving the existence of God. So, what is evidence? The atheists will probably say that evidence is scientific evidence. That's what they'll say. We want scientific evidence. Scientific evidence is uh, physical evidence uh, based on the scientific method in peer-reviewed uh, scientific articles or journals. Uh, and it involves experimentation, you know, apparatus and scientists and experimentation and uh, repeated results leading to the same conclusion. Well, that's that's a subset of evidence. Uh, evidence is a much broader uh, idea than simply scientific evidence. And scientific evidence is some of the most rigorous and hardest to obtain evidence there is. So this is really a trick. Because they'll say Hitchens razor, and then but then they'll be demanding scientific evidence, and they won't tell you that it's really they were, they're asking for scientific evidence. You don't need to have scientific evidence to have evidence. Evidence is a much broader concept. Now, uh, the the law, for instance, uh, has rule books, evidence rule books, and the law defines evidence. So uh, a common understanding of what evidence means uh, can be found in the law. Uh, for instance, we have the rules of evidence, uh, I believe 401, rule 401, defines relevant evidence. And uh, uh, under the law, relevant evidence means evidence having a tendency in reason to prove or disprove any fact of consequence to the determination of the action. So it's a broad definition of evidence. It's basically anything that could make something more or less likely is considered evidence. Uh, and that's not just scientific evidence. That's all sorts of other types of evidence. Whether that's um, 
circumstantial evidence or uh, testimony or eyewitness evidence or evidence based on inferences or presumptions or logical deductions. Even mathematics can give you evidence that isn't scientific evidence. So there's all sorts of types of evidence that aren't, uh, strictly speaking, scientific evidence. Uh, and if you're going to claim, you may, you're going to make a claim like Hitchens Razor that you have to present evidence. Well, you got to use the, the understanding and definition of evidence that most people use, which is anything that would make something more or less likely, not just scientific evidence. Uh, a second issue with Hitchens razor is, uh, what is the burden of proof? What burden of proof are you, you asserting in Hitchens razor? And, the atheist, again, is going to say something along the lines of, well, we want scientific evidence. Well, the burden of proof on scientific evidence is extremely high because you're talking about um, peer-reviewed journal articles uh, and repeated experimental results. And that's an extremely high burden of proof to obtain that something is true. I mean, you got to go through a lot of effort and expense uh, and uh, to, to satisfy that something is true in terms of scientific evidence. Well, clearly that's not how people make decisions uh, concerning their lives and in everyday life. And there's no reason that a belief in God should have a higher burden of proof than any other belief that you have in your life. So uh, it shouldn't be a high burden of proof like scientific evidence would demand. Uh, it should be what you normally would use as a burden of proof. So uh, in everyday life, generally speaking, when we decide that something is true or not, the burden of proof we might use is what's called a preponderance of the evidence. And that's a legal term, preponderance of the evidence. And that's a burden of proof used in civil cases. And all it really means is that the something is more likely than not. So in balancing, uh, you, you know, the arguments that some in favor of something being true and the arguments that the thing is not true, it only, the, the, the evidence that it's true, uh, only has to slightly outweigh the evidence that it's not true. And that's a preponderance. So it's based, it, it's more than a 50% chance that it's true. So, you know, 50 plus percent chance that it's true. That's good enough to meet the level of preponderance of the evidence as a burden. And that's what we generally do in everyday life. I mean, we're not, we don't specifically say to ourselves, do I have enough proof that this is true by just the tiniest amount so that I believe it? We don't go through those mechanisms. But generally speaking, we just, we believe things that we think are more likely than not. That's a very common burden of proof we put on all our beliefs. So that would be a, a reasonable burden of proof uh, on the question of the existence of God. Is God more likely than not? That's a fair burden of proof. And you don't need to use scientific evidence to prove that. So in, in terms of the existence of God, the, the cosmological arguments for the existence of God, which I've done many videos about, uh, uh, in weighing the question of does God exist, uh, using a preponderance of the evidence burden of proof, using the cosmological arguments, which are logical deduction, deductions. It's not scientific evidence. These are logical deductions. And circumstantial evidence based on the way the universe works. The answer is yes, yes. The, God meets the preponderance of the evidence. Yes, there's definitely a, a more than 50% plus 
likelihood that God exists. And that's why you can reasonably believe that God exists. Um, so the atheists are always trying to make that burden much, much harder. Uh, and and that's, that's a false argument. It's not true. We don't do that in ordinary life, in our ordinary lives. There's no reason to assert that sort of higher burden of proof and higher burden of evidence on the question of God. Uh, we don't do that in our ordinary lives. There's no reason we should have to do that on the question of God. This, this is really just an atheistic setup argument, uh, to try to convince you God doesn't exist. And it's an unfair argument. Uh, you know, be aware of it. Uh, it's, it's a scam argument. <laughs> and, but unfortunately, some people fall for this. Uh, and, but don't be one of those people. All right. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, please press the subscribe button. I appreciate it. And, uh, I hope you learned something. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the atheists are always coming up with new stuff, <laughs> new stuff to try to convince you God doesn't exist or Jesus isn't God or, um, oh God, hey, they're always thinking of stuff, new stuff. This is new. This is new stuff. So always be on the lookout for it and understand that there, there is always, always a counter argument. Uh, but you have to know what it is. Uh, and you can watch my videos and you'll find out. <laughs> All right. Take care.